Everybody, welcome back, man. It's your boy, D-Friend. We're back in the building for episode number 35 of the D-Friend Show. Before we get into anything, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you turn on the post notifications so you know every single time that I post it on the channel as well. We had a couple things to run through. We got the life of the party, diss, responses, this and that. Kanye, Andre 3000. We got the R. Kelly debacle that's going on with Certified Lover Boy. Kendrick's dropping. DJ Academics, Meek Mill. There's a lot of things going on in today's episode. But it's going to be nice and quick and fast. So the first thing I just want to announce, just because I've seen it, there's not really too much to touch on about it. Oh, yeah, before we get into that, subscribe on SoundCloud, Spotify, and iTunes. You can look up the different show on SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure you hit the subscribe button right now so you don't miss out any posts, any clips, any whatever. Just hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, and you're good to go. God bless you. Anyways, Kendrick has released, like, uh, I guess whenever you're about to publish music, you put it through the ASCAP system, the BMI, let them know, hey, this is a song I'm making. It's going to get published in royalty, whatever, however they do in the music industry, that's where you submit your music to to let them know that some shit is potentially possibly coming. So the titles of the songs include Before the Hangman's Noose, Comfortable, Director, Fighter, Thief in the Night, Fade to Black, Erica Kane, End of the Line of Poppers and Poets, Believe, Driving Down the Darkness, End of the Line, Fell for You. You can all see the songs were published via hardworking Black Folks, Inc. In all the hype surrounding Kanye West, Donda, and Certified Lover Boy, Kendrick may come through with an album to silence the noise. If his feature on Family Ties any indication, Kendrick has been experimenting with new accents and flows. At one point, this upcoming album was rumored to be a rock and punk genre meddled, um, meld with hip-hop. However, nothing else is really known about the sound and direction of the album. Are you ready for a new Kendrick Lamar album? So that's just... What's coming in? This is about some of the title tracks. I mean, that you see the Hangman's News, uh, Poppers and Poets, things of that nature. Down to the darkness. It's gonna be a very, you know, I would assume it's gonna be a dark direction. Um, I feel like it's gonna be more in the vein, content-wise, of a To Pimp a Butterfly than a more commercial-friendly, damn-sounding album. I would think it goes more in that heavy, sam- like very sampled. Maybe some rock samples. Maybe some nice. Je- I think it's gonna go down that route, especially with hearing those um things from and i'm excited for it because we've been getting so much great music like like like, like i said forget the the battle the, the beat between kendra and that kendra between drake and kanye for a second and we just really gotta appreciate that the last two weeks of music that have been put out are probably some of the best music that's been put out the entire year some of the best music that have been put out the entire year has been put out the last two weeks i need to discount people like money back yo's album j cole's album um, who else I'm not like Rod Waves album. I like the voice in the hero album. Like not to discount any of these albums that released, but this is in the last two weeks of hype, feeling, emotion, and passion. Like this is the most passionate two weeks. Okay, I'll say this. This is the most passionate two weeks of music that we've had this year. No debates, regardless if you like it or not, conversation. It's really been about the music. Not no bullshit. Now their beef is bullshit, but you're also getting it within the music. So speaking of that. Drake tried to pull a little, um, Drake tried to pull a little Houdini, right? Drake tried to pull a little trickery, let's get, let's get out ahead in front of it. So he was on his OVO Sound Radio, which I think plays on Apple Music still to this day, and he leaked a Kanye diss featuring Andre 3000. It's called Life of the Party. So some of the disses that are included in this track are, to this day, the whole team can di- kiss his dick. That's not about them. That was referring to South Park making a meme about him on the episode. So I don't know why they put that on here. But I put Virgil and Drake on the same text, and it wasn't about the matching uh, Arist- Ar- Ar- Architect- Ar- Architrex or Kid Cudi dress. If you don't know what Architrex is, it's like an outdoor clothing brand. I don't know if they had like matching fits on or something like that. But just told these grown men, stop it with the funny shit. I might hire the whole team from ACG. So if you don't know ACG, ACG is partnering with Nike to create Drake's clothing line, which is called Nocta or something like that. It's like Nocta. He's creating some kind of clothing brand, right? I've seen him promote this golfer who's going to be golfing against Dave Portnoy, who's wearing the Nocta brand. I don't know if Drake's trying to get into fashion like Kanye or he's doing sports fashion. I don't know what he's doing, but he's in that lane. And Kanye, well, this is a, these disses that we're claiming are like these, oh my, skate, because everybody's like, oh my God, Drake might have, they might have backfired on him by releasing this track. And I don't know if they're saying it because of the diss or because they thought the record was so good. But like, none of these disses these guys are really throwing at each other are super like scathing disses. Like, they haven't really 
push the line. I feel like when Drake said, you know, instead of sitting at the address, you should put it in your driver's thing and pull up. Like, that's like, that's confrontational, but they're not really hitting each other. They ain't on no, no Vaseline. They ain't pulling out a hit them up. Like, they're not really scathing disses to this point. Now, I do feel like each of them have dirt on each other, and it could go that route. It could get really ugly. It could get really nasty. But I feel like they're both feeling, okay, he hasn't really said nothing too crazy. We're keeping it between us. But if we really want to cross that line, I feel like they both have enough ammunition to cross the line. I hope they don't cross that line because I think, you know, kiss and make up, guys, and, you know, continue to make music together because I feel like they would make, and they have in the past, made great music together. They just have. So, anyways, he went on to say, Told Drake don't play with me on GD. He sent that message to everybody. So I guess he's claiming that uh, he sent a threat on GD. I didn't know Kanye was a, a GD. I know he had the guy Ruga on uh, the album. It was like, who let the GDs in the door? But I didn't know Kanye himself is now claiming GD or affiliated with GD. Now uh, he is from Chicago. So I don't know what Kanye was doing in his younger days. They say when you get in the gang, you don't ever really get out of the gang. So maybe Kanye is a GD. I don't know. Or... He let Ruga in the door, so the GD's got his back. He's claiming it. He's 6 9 in it. I don't know. I don't know if Kanye's pulling the 6 9 by claiming the gang now. I don't know. But apparently, on GD, unless he's talking about God, T told Drake don't play with him. So if I hit you with a WYD, you better hit me with, yes, sir, I'm writing everything you need. So he's pretty much saying, he's trying to really son Drake, really. Like, if I say, what you doing, you need to be saying, yes, sir, I'm writing. The music you need me to write. So he's, he he know he need Drake. Well, he don't need Drake for the writing, but, you know, he know Drake will help him with some writing things that he has to do. So he's sending a shot like that. Nigga, you, you my little son. You my little writer. Like, go write. If I ask you what you're doing, you say, yes, sir, I'm writing your next big single. That's what you do. And then he said, I told you I was going to take the summer back, so any of that cap won't take none of that. Why, uh, with my motherfucking red hat back on his MAGA wave. I ain't got no problem with you. Fuck with Trump. Hey. I had a picture of them, too, but I, I didn't figure out where I'm going to put it at. But it was a picture of Trump and Kanye, but it's like a cartoon, but it's, it's cool. Um, like I said, as far as dissing, like, people was, like, hyping it up. I don't think that's, like, nothing too scathing that went into this. Like, it's just rich guys talking about rich shit. I'm going to hire the team that's creating your clothing line. It's, like, petty beef shit. He also said, uh, where is it at? I wrote it down. He said... I might hire the whole team from ACG, so don't text me like I'm Juanita JVC. Now fans are breaking down the ACG line. Okay, that's not the part of the bar, but Juanita JVC is the Instagram, so don't text me like you text Juanita. So he's, he's throwing it out there that Drake was fucking around with whoever Juanita JCV. Nice looking lady if you look up on Instagram, but that is what Kanye is throwing out there. So they, like I said, they know things about each other that could really take this whole diss thing to another level, but I want Kanye to do it if Kanye's going to do it, do it yourself. Because if Drake's going to do it, Drake's going to do it. So if we're going to take it there, you know, like I said, I don't really want them to take it there. But if they do take it there and start hitting low blows, I want Kanye to be man enough to take it there with Drake. Because, now I'm going to get to the Andre 3000 response to all this because I feel like it's a good-hearted thing in Andre 3000 response. But whenever I see, whenever I spoke about the initial uh, Drake and Kanye Thing that was going on whenever I believe Kanye's team put out a statement that was like we'll see what happens if this could be rekindled but if he throws shots on certified lover boy there will be consequences and when they said there'll be consequences I thought it would be actual consequences not consequence the ghostwriter for Kanye West because consequence has been consistently speaking about Drake even before the album release he said Drake when you drop him where's your where's his release date at you're scared yada 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 I told Kanye, don't send the help. Send yourself. Don't send the help. Send bo- send the boss, not the help. And the help is trying to get in the limelight. Now, in no way, and I'm about to compare Push T. I don't think Push T is a help. Push T is his own solidified artist. The clips, this, that. He puts out music. Music sounds good. He's not really the help, even though he did kind of amplify the beef that sparked in 2018 before Scorpion. But I wouldn't consider, I mean, he's still the, the help. But he's not the help. Like, consequence is the help. Nobody wants to hear shit consequence, guys. I don't care what he's trying to do to insert himself in the beef. Nobody is asking for consequence to come and help Kanye. But consequence to his own, you know, 
his own whatever, he decided to jump out the window and help Kanye. The first thing he did was speak about how Drake got the leak of Life of the Party featuring Andre 3000. So he went on to say, you know, we're going to find the mole. And I mean, this ain't really how he speaks, but we're going to find the mole. On Queens, whenever we find them, you know, we're going to do a little bit more than what, you know, they're going to beat him up, I guess. Whoever leaked, whoever the mole is, they're going to leak it. If you listen to Drake's album and all the Kanye digs that are within that album, he consistently says, your people are leaving. Your flock is leaving you. These people are going out the back door. They're coming over here. They're coming to me. Your team is leaving. So he's constantly already sprinkling all that shit out there. That people are leaving the Kanye West camp for whatever reason they're leaving. And it, it just brings me back to DJ Envy going on the rant, how he thinks Kanye is a bad person, how Kanye talks to his staff and how he treats people behind the scenes. And that could be a reason why Drake just so happened to get this full length this to him. But, with Andre 3000 on it, which Don, uh, he, he, Andre was going for the Donda theme. Kanye was going for the We on Drake head. I guess these bars, are they really at the head top? Like, we're talking about fashion bullshit and on GD. Kanye's GD now. Maybe that means God. I don't know. But is that really scathing? Is it? And a lot of people was like, Drake, it backfired on Drake because Drake released the, a song that's better than any song that's on his album. Do I really think Life of the Party is better than any song on Turn by Love Boy? You might. That's, that's your opinion. But I don't think so. I think Andre 3000 was amazing. Kanye was good, but I don't think them two mixed together with this song Life of the Party with the DMX sample at the end where he's on the the, uh, the slingshot with his daughter. Yeah, that's beautiful. Or his son, whoever he was on there with, that's beautiful. But better than everything on Certified Love Boy backfire. I think like the internet, they just internet. And a lot of people get their opinions and their talking points from the internet. So if somebody sees somebody that they deem of value, because of value in this society is that blue check mark and a lot of followers and a lot of retweets, we deem that as a person who opinion is valuable and valid. If you don't have that, then your opinion doesn't really seem as valid or valuable. But a lot of people just go to them, see what they say. And if they say it, that's what it, how it goes. That's how it goes. And it goes for both sides. They see a certified Love Boys classic. They'll start saying certified Love Boys classic. They say this is trash and they deem that person valuable and valid. Then everything that they say will be in that vein as well. Not everybody, but I feel like that's a large swath of the social media dynamic that goes on. But anyways, my point with Consequence is Consequence dropped. They put out a text message that was like party time, 8 p.m. So everybody was gearing up thinking that party time life of the party oh shit they're gonna just drop i mean they're gonna drop it i would assume Kanye's probably gonna change things because drake's already pulled his ace out the hand so maybe he's gonna change it up a little bit and have some different kind of disses in it but the consequence used as a as, as, as an opportunity to drop his shit if you go on youtube and look up consequence party time you sit there wondering like this is the nigga that writes for Kanye west this is why this is why you're a writer. I see I see why you're a writer. The, the bars ain't nothing. Like the bars aren't trash, but the delivery, the 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 fucking Looney Tune ass beat. Like, what do we listen to here? If you go to it, you're gonna see more likes and dislikes because y'all hyped it up like life of the party's about to drop, and then we got party time by consequence. Who the fuck gives about consequence this and Kanye whenever we never heard Drake say shit about consequence? Now consequence might be on some joe budden shit there might be underlying things under the sheets that he said that they know is directed at them i don't know but my opinion nobody thought whenever boo which is kanye's manager said there will be consequences that we're gonna get consequence nobody fucking thought that and nobody fucking want that so consequence go back in the go back in the, the go back to wyoming go back to wherever kanye assembles his team of collaborators and just go write some shit for Kanye let Kanye give you the information Drake did this to this girl he was with this girl he he he, he did this to this person he did that you go sit in the corner write then hand the piece of paper to Kanye to rap we don't want to hear you rap it I'm sorry we do not want to hear you beefing with Drake because Drake is not going to respond to you if he barely respond think about this in the Pusha T battle besides the like the story of Addy Don, what was it that dropped? That dropped, the, the last song on Push T album dropped. Then Drake dropped his diss. And then Pusha T hit him with the story of Addy Don. And then after that, a lot of the bars that was getting thrown was really directed at Kanye. So if he barely was reacting to a guy who was actually in battle with, do you really think he's going to really have 
a lot of time and bars for consequence. No consequence using this as a moment to, you know, rekindle or, or try to garner some type of, you know, notoriety from the situation, some type of relevance from the situation when nobody is honestly asking for anything that has to do with consequences. And I forgot to play this earlier because it was funny. But speaking of people trying to gain relevance from a situation, we have to laugh at Ruby Rose. We just have to. I just want to play the clip because this shit was hilarious. Drake made a bar. He was talking about a watch, and he said it's a Ruby Rose two-tone. Now, unless there's something about Ruby Rose that's two-tone and something – it's not about her, but let's just watch her and her. It's really her team, the people around her that make this clip just so, so lovely. <laughs> the team is going crazy. Ruby. Take this shot, bro. Take this shot. We taking a shot for that one, Ruby. They taking a shot. She about to break her phone. She taking the water and the, and the, and the tequila. Come on. I need to see this part. They ran it back to double up on the Ruby Rose bar. Like, it looked like a second of the song. She had, oh my God. So I, I feel so like Ruby. Ruby, 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 Ruby. It ain't because she said y'all hating, but like Ruby, you got it. You can't jump out the window like that. Now, if Drake really did have a bar that was concocted and drafted that actually made sense, like if he was like, "I'm with my DDGs," like I'm Ruby Rose, like that would okay. Hey, Ruby done made it into this song. I'm with my DDGs, like I'm with my G's, my double dog G. I don't know what the DDG was stand for, but I'm with my DDGs. Like I'm Ruby Rose. Now that's a cheer. That's an applause. That's a that's a that's a moment for you. Because as a Drake fan, if that nigga mentioned me, I'll be like, okay, that nigga mentioned me. Okay, that's the <laughs> it might be cause for a little bit of a, a shot too. But if we're gonna pull anything, I pulled out the Ruby Rose two tone. You think that's about you, sweetie? Stop it. You having a great year. You made double XL. I see her at all these festivals that are going on. She's trying to grow her bread. She's trying to grow her thing. But just don't jump out the window. Don't 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 set yourself up for internet memory. Don't do it to yourself. And don't let your friends hype you up to do it to yourself because they're gonna let you. Cause they because they're so excited for you because they're connected to you. They like, well shit. If Drake mentioned her and I'm connected to her, then hey, he talking to all of us then. That's how they looking at it. That, that's all. Just people try to make this stuff relevant off the Kanye and Drake situation. Ruby Rose is funny. I really want to know if she really thought it was about it. She had to. She was taking shots. She was, they ran it back. She pulled up the Ruby. She had a watch on. She pulled it. Stop it. It wasn't about you. But it was funny. But stop it. So, I want to get to uh, Andre. Before we get into the, the response to R. Kelly, I want to get to the Andre 3000 response real quick. So, Andre 3000 is we all know is one of the goats of this rap shit. Every time he gets on the track, it's magical. It's amazing. And everybody is clamoring to hear it. So anyways, a few weeks ago, this is his statement from him. A few weeks ago, Kanye reached out to me to be a part of the Donda album. I was inspired by his idea to make a musical tribute to his mom. It felt appropriate for me to support the Donda concept by referencing my own mother who passed away in 2013. We both share that loss. I thought it was a beautiful choice to make a clean album, but unfortunately, I didn't know that was the plan before I wrote and recorded my verse. It was very clear to me then that the edited and clean format of the verse would not work without having the raw original also available. So sadly, I had to be omitted from the original album release. So if you, if you haven't listened to his his verse, it gets a little bit, you know, vulgar. He talking about, you know, hey, mama, this girl that used to tutor me. I was in the back beating up from the back. Whatever he was saying about telling us to, which is wild too. It's like, hey, Miss Donda, tell my mama that, I love to go to church because I was really having sex with this girl in the back, which is wild, but art is going to art. It's going to do what art is going to do what art is going to do. So then he also went on to say, the track I received and wrote to didn't have the disc verse on it, and we were hoping to make a more focused offering for the Donda album. But I guess things happen like they're supposed to. It's unfortunate that it was released in this way, and two artists that I love are going back and forth. I wanted to be on Certified Lover Boy too. Ooh, that would have been amazing. 
Could you imagine Andre on? What would Andre be on? What track from Certified Level would Andre sound great on? Would he sound great on Race My Mind? Would he sound great on TSU? Would he sound great either before or after Little Baby on Girl on Girl? I don't know. He would have probably sounded great anyway. But anyways, I want to be on Certified Level Boy too. I just want to work with people that inspire me. Hopefully, I can work with Kendrick on his album. I love to work with Lil Baby, Tyler, and Jay-Z. I respect them all. So, I like that because that just shows me. And I, and I, take, um, I take heed to what legends look at and appreciate. So, like, when I hear them say Lil Baby's name, they're like, he's doing this, he's doing that. I take heed to that. I, I, I respect that. So, when you see that Andre 3000 respects an artist like Lil Baby, you know that Lil Baby is legit. Tyler the Creator is legit. Jay-Z is obviously Jay-Z, but they're all legit. So he don't really want to be a part of this bullshit. He don't want to get sucked into that drama, and I understand it, and I fully get why he is trying to, you know, get out in front of it. I didn't know there was going to be disses on here. I didn't know Kanye was going to do that, but that is what Kanye decided to go ahead and do. So then we roll into the drama of the Drake album. So people were trying to really just find anything to make an article about, make a story about, make a fuss about, get mad about, just anything they can find to create some type of drama and story around this album, right? So the thing that they did and found was there is an R. Kelly credit on one of the songs on um, Drake's album, which is TSU. So there was tweet, oh my God, how could Drake and his team justify putting R. Kelly after what he's done? He's on trial. He's a nasty man. He owns his rights. He owns his publishing. So you're feeding the monster. You're giving him money. That was everybody's story, right? I don't really, I get it. R. Kelly's a nasty motherfucker. He did some crazy shit. Every day there's a new tes- testimony from the album. I see one thing that say he had the girl constantly every day walking on the leash. Another girl say he told underage girls the parents didn't want him. To manip- he's a nasty man. Stick, I say allegedly, nasty man, allegedly. But with the music, I just don't look at it like that. Like, if Drake used this and R. Kelly gets some bread, if he going to prison, because he's most like he's going to prison. Okay, he's gonna get better snacks. He's gonna get better. Like, yeah, I think it's like he's gonna use the money towards lawyer fees, and somehow he's gonna get off. I doubt it. Especially, like I said, especially all the testimony that just keeps coming out every single day. That's going to happen. But like I said, people on Twitter, they want to find shit. They want to complain about something. And this is just the thing they decided to come out and complain about. I had this tweet from this guy. He had like a a three, a three long, a three post tweet thing, thread about the entire situation. And then he, you know, just certified level boy and Donda. They're both trash because both these guys are trash. Kanye's trash. Drake's trash. Everybody's trash. Live your life. Go enjoy your fucking day. A lot of people can't enjoy that. Like, go enjoy your life. Who's going on the... I mean, some people... I'm not saying people don't. A lot of people do this. They want to go look at the credits. Who's the producer? Who's the writers? Who's like, I can fucking... Play, press play. I don't give a damn. Press play. But they found R. Kelly and they went hoobla about everybody on social media. They latched onto it because it's something to latch onto. It's a great trending topic. If you talk about it, you get retweets, you get likes, all that great shit, right? So 40, Drake's trusted producer, brother, for life, he had to respond to this because he couldn't allow like i can allow you know kanye disses we can allow whatever we can allow but we gotta try to get on that cancel culture wave with it we gotta stop that right there in this track so this is 40 statement on a song called tsu at the beginning is a sample of og ron c houston legend talking I, he didn't say houston legend but i'm adding in talking behind that faintly which you can't even hear is an r kelly song playing in the background so in the sample they use of OG Ron C, in his original video, whatever he was doing, in the background of that is an R. Kelly song that you can barely ever hear, but it's playing in the back. So it has no significance, no lyrics are present. R. Kelly's voice isn't even present, but if we wanted to use Ron C talking, which was a, a good part of the beginning of TSU, we're forced to license that. Doesn't sit well with me, let me just say that, and I'm not here to defend Drake's lyrics, but I thought I would clear up that there is no actual R. Kelly present, and it's a bit misleading to call him a co-lyricist. It is kind of wild because I was reading Baby Girl by Kathy Landoli, 
and the recounts of some of that stuff is horrific and disgusting. Then I saw this post and I just had to say something because to think we would stand beside that guy or write with him is just incredibly disgusting. So they're just, he's, he's saying like, hey, if one of you is OG Ron C, he had R. Kelly playing in the background. We had to license that from R. Kelly. So that's why R. Kelly is credited on the album as a writer. He's not actually a writer. You don't really hear his voice. But he is on that sample of OG Ron C. And we had to get that clear. So I, I, and I'm sure they didn't even pay R. Kelly hella bread for that little whatever. <laughs> R. Kelly was probably happy to get any kind of bread he can get from somebody like Drake in, or Drake's team, Universe, whoever. So there was that, and that was the last controversy from Certified Lover Boy. And last thing I'm going to touch on today before I get about here is DJ Academics. He got to stop. He's wild. DJ Academics is wilding. Uh, he went on live stream, and I just seen this part of it, but he went on live stream when Certified Lover Boy dropped, right? It was delayed, so he was already drunk. He was already off the Henny, off the, what do you say, he was on Casamigos. Whatever he was off of, he was off of it. And he continues to antagonize my song and Meek Mill. Now, fairly antagonizing them because they antagonize him so i don't know if it's called antagonizing when you're going back and forth but he's responding in a i would say much more publicly aggressive way now they say things about him he's greenlit which you know that's code word for it's on site or that people they own you and my son he just likes to go off about like, oh, he's bad for hip hop or whatever. Dumb, like, yeah, yeah shit. all right, bro, I get it. And I ain't got nothing against my song, but it's like, is that what y'all really gonna focus on? Y'all gonna think that he's the problem? Like y'all try to that people really try to make it like academics like starts the beats, the beefs, cultivates the beefs, and, and, and enhances the beefs. Like if academic wasn't here, these guys wouldn't be killing each other. If these guys wasn't here, he they they wouldn't. They, all violence would cease to exist in hip hop if academics was not posting. And then they also clearly forget to mention that besides him first of all most of he posts is posted by artists and all the other blogs posted everybody else but when somebody brings that to them hey you said nothing with vlad posted no jumper posted shade room posted ball alert posted neighborhood talk posted uh rap posted six buzz like the everybody posts it but y'all only attack this guy why is it because he's a face why don't attack adam 22 is it because he's white what, what are the reasons why I only attack this guy right here? Is it because y'all think he's soft? He's in the basement. He's got his webcam on. He's recording. Y'all think like, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that what y'all think? I don't know. But this is what he had to say to my son and Meek Mill, which I think is pretty dangerous for him. But hey, if it, it teaches him. If them bitch ass niggas don't, don't pull up there, when they say, oh, I can scare you, don't come outside, I ain't going to never be in your hood, you dumb ass nigga. Meek, you fucking bozo. You really don't really be in no Philly hood, nigga. You be acting like you be being no hood. You don't be in no hood, nigga. I'm telling you where I'm going to be at, though. So if you really got a problem with me, don't call me out on no internet no more. I'm telling Meek right now. If you got a problem with me, don't call me out on no internet. Show up to my workplace. Show up to where you know I'm going to be at. Same with my song. Only I'll show up to where I'm going to be at. Because I know how to handle y'all niggas when y'all show up there. But y'all won't. Y'all gonna sit here and just keep making excuses. Act don't come outside, nigga. I go to work every fucking day. Let's get on to CLB, all right? Meek, you heard what I said. You a bitch for talking about I'm greenlit, but you ain't did shit. You said you had my address and I've been here waiting. We've been on surveillance waiting for your ass. You ain't did shit. I gave you my new workplace. You ain't go, you ain't gonna do shit. And then that bitch ass nigga, what's that nigga's name? Uh uh um uh Mike uh, my son. My son. Don't don't talk about oh I ain't gonna say anything. nigga I'm saying this in front of the world. Pull up there and do something. I'm gonna be there. I have to shoot a podcast, 150 episodes per per year. If you don't if you don't do nothing, you a bitch. Okay, so that's his statement. Now, to be fair, he did give out his address. He did give out his location. He told him come to monitor. I don't know some shit in New Jersey. I looked it up just because I got to see what type of facility this is. But it's like a, it's like a fine arts building. It's like a, not a facility for people to, I guess, they rent out space. Yeah, like film studios, camera, you know, photographer studio. Like, it's a place to rent out studio space, right? And he's rented out a large amount of studio space for whatever he got going on. But to be honest, do you really think these, not, not, not even because Meek Mill is necessarily scared to do something. Not because my son is scared to do something. 
But do you really think they're going to come up there and do something? I'm sure that place, it looks like a nice building. It looks like a pretty nice place. It's going to have cameras everywhere. If we get into a fight, you know, you can get sued, you can get this, you can get arrested for assault, da da da, whatever. You can get, that could happen to you. So I believe academics speaks his way to these guys. One, because he might actually be angry, he might be tired of the shit. That might be true too. But also because he knows that they're probably not going to like pull up in that manner. They're going to, if they're going to catch him, they're going to catch him on some, like, low-key shit. They're not going to, like, pull up to your house where you probably get hella camera. Like he said, we got surveillance who watch for you. They're not going to pull up to your studio where you're going to have – they're going to be cameras on the street. Like, it's New York. We live in a surveillance state. There's cameras everywhere. We're going to know what happened to whatever, whoever, you know, whatever, whoever, whatever. We're going to know what happened to you. But me, personally, academics, I, I he do talk a little bit too street – tough like talking right like if i was to get into a, a thing with meek mill or my son or whatever it'd be more of an idealistic thing like let, let, let's spar with ideas right now i don't know the meek mill shit's different and i don't and i could be remiss about my son i don't know if my son ever threatened violence but if he threatened violence then okay you've done the violence you gotta do something meek mill saying i'm greenlit you're that's that's you that's a you know it's a violent thing you're, you're promoting violence towards me so if i want to be aggressive towards you i get that and then if you're not going to do anything don't say i'm green i get that i'm not disparaging him for doing this but i don't think he really i don't think he really wants them to do shit to him you know what i'm saying like i don't think he really wants it but he has to he has to come out of himself to say like fuck y'all you pussy you a bitch because let's be honest, if my, this is how, this how i'm trying to run my shit if I wouldn't say it to you when you're sitting in front of me, then I'm not going to say it on here. That's how I'm trying to run my shit. If I'm not going to be like, you a bitch ass, if I don't feel like I would say that in front of you, then I'm not going to say it to you. Because people just pull like, hey, when Vince, St not Vince Staples, what's his name? What's the guy from Chicago's name? Who like was in front of Ag, you talking about my dead homies, I'll slap the shit out of you. He, what's that guy's name? Y'all know his name. Comment down below. I forgot what the fuck is. I was about to say Vince Staples. It's Vince something, right? Vince McMahon. What the fuck is I haven't said Vince. I don't know what the fuck his name is. The guy from Chicago who used to be with uh Chase Rapper, he's gave away shoes. I don't remember what his name is, but that guy. If my son and Meek Mill was really in front of you, would you really be talking to him that aggressively? I don't think so. So I would just advise against it because then it started looking like fake tough guy shit. And that's when you give people the, the, the range of Rome to criticize you for whatever they want to criticize you for. But a guy like Academics, he don't give a fuck. He go get on there, get drunk, talk his shit. It's very entertaining. But as far as the reality of the situations, I don't think it's too smart to be giving up your address. I don't think it's too smart to be telling people where you're at because a lot of times it might not be meek. And I don't know, I don't know shit about my son. I know he do until freedom. I see him on Love Hip Hop. They doing rallies or whatever. I see him do that. I don't know about his street aspects of his life. But I wouldn't be antagonizing people, especially because Meek Mill might not be the guy that comes up to the studio, right? Uh, my son might not be the guy that comes up to the studio, right? They, they might not be the guys. There might be robbers, <laughs> regular people who are like, I think academics is an easy lick. He doesn't know me, so he won't even see me coming. I'll come up there and do something. I'll take his R8. I'll take his 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 his, 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 his whatever kind of car he got. I'll take it. I'll take his money. I'll rob him. I don't care. It's academics. What he gonna do to me? But he seems prepared, and I hope when he says, we got something for you, I hope you're not inviting these these guys to your place just to, like, shoot at them. Like, because, because if you're going to invite them there and the meat mill shit greenly, so that's violence, that's, that's, uh, that's prevalent with, like, killing, but I don't think he means to kill you. But, like, if they're going to come with violence, it should be hand-to-hand -hand combat, not gun-to-hand. You know, eh, just be careful. The shit, I don't think the shit got to go that far. But, A, I do agree with these guys should not really be speaking on him the way they speak about him because I don't think he is to blame for whatever he is to blame for. I feel like Meek Mill's situation, he got salty whenever the back-to-back -back shit came out, and obviously uh, Academics is a big Drake fan, so he got salty behind that. There wasn't a bunch of promo behind him because we know Meek Mill is synonymous and guilty of, early in his career, being mad when people of relevance did not post his album. He went at Wale for it. He went at this person. He was very emotional about people not posting his album. And maybe he got emotional because Academics wasn't posting as well. So I had to take Meek Mill's criticism of him with a grain of salt because I'm sure if Academics was power training, and that sounds a little wild, power training behind Meek Mill instead of Drake at the time or just pushing Meek Mill's, Meek Mill's music to the fullest, I'm a super Meek fan. Meek Mill would not have that same um, talking points or bravado against Academics.
My son, maybe he wants to be a culture critic and he wants to be in that spot. And he looks at academics as a danger. So he's kind of like people do get jealous of your platform. You got a big platform like academics too. People do be envious of that. Like, damn, how can I get to sit in front of millions of people and maybe not to give, obviously not to give the same message, but to get out my message. Why does he get that platform? And some of it do look like bitterness and spitefulness because a lot of the talking points that they use against academics, like I said in the beginning, can be used against any other block. But they don't talk about all these other blocks. Hollywood Unlocked has a face, Jason Lee. But I don't see people attacking Jason Lee when he posts shit. Is it because he's part of the LGBT? I, I ain't gonna get conspiracy theories. But they don't go at him, but they go at academics. I don't know. Y'all let me know each other in the conversation. I appreciate you guys for watching the podcast. Make sure you subscribe, SoundCloud, Spotify, iTunes, all that good shit like that. I'll be back with another video and more things to talk about tomorrow. I think I might have my final Certified Love Boy review of the full album. I listened to it probably about eight, nine, ten times already. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. It's your friend. Peace.